hello, welcome back to Art Together Online from the Worcester Art Museum. Today, we're going to be using the book, Is Your Mama a Mama? for our inspiration story. So let's hop on into the book before we go into the collection. Is Your Mama a Mama? Written by Deborah Guarino, illustrated by Stephen Kellogg. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Dave. No, she is not, is the answer Dave gave. She hangs by her feet and she lives in a cave. I do not believe that's how llamas behave. Oh, I said, you are right about that. I think that your mama sounds more like a bat. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Fred. No, she is not, is what Freddie said. She has a long neck and white feathers and wings. I don't think a llama has all of those things. Oh, I said, you don't need to go on. I think that your mama must be a swan. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Jane. No, she is not, Jane politely explained. She grazes on grass and she likes to say, moo. I don't think that is what a llama would do. Oh, I said, I understand now. I think that your mama must be a cow. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Clyde. No, she is not is how Clyde replied. She's got flippers and whiskers and eats fish all day. I do not think llamas act quite in that way. Oh, I said, I'm beginning to feel that your mama must really be a seal. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Rhonda. No, she is not, is how Rhonda responded. She's got big hind legs and a pocket for me, so I don't think a llama is what she could be. Oh, I said, that is certainly true. I think that your mama is a kangaroo. Is your mama a llama? I asked my friend Lynn. Oh, Lloyd, don't be silly, Lynn said with a grin. My mama has big ears, long lashes, and fur. And you, of all people, should know about her. Our mamas belong to the same herd, and you know all about llamas, because you are one too. Yes, you are right, I said to my friend. My mama's a llama. And this is the end. Well, this book, Is Your Mama a Llama, has a bunch of great images of mothers or grown-up animals and babies or younger juvenile animals. So let's look at some of the animals that we had. We have bats. We had swans. We had cows. We had seals. We even had a kangaroo. And then, of course, we had llamas. Now, today we're going to be looking at pieces of art from the Worcester Art Museum that have both parents or mothers and children in them. But all the pieces that we are going to look at have human mothers and children. So we're going to look just over here. The first piece from the Worcester Art Museum that we're going to look at is called South End Boston with shy child and mother. Now this piece was a photograph taken in the 1950s and it's by Hansi Durlach. So this is a photograph and in you, you can see that there's a mother who's really smiling almost as though she's laughing and then tucked in next to her legs looks like a little boy who's 
very shy and sort of hiding. So this piece is full of happy emotion. Let's take a look at our next piece. This piece is actually a ink and color piece, so it's more of a painting, and it's done on paper. But what it's done of is what traditional wooden Japanese dolls would look like, and these are called kukishi. Now, this is an image of two of those dolls, a mother and a young child. And you can see that they have very strong and bold colors. Um, they have a lot of traditional or um, usual designs back from um, the history of Japan. Now this is a work on paper done by Inagashi Toshijiro, and although it's not the actual wooden dolls, which were sculptural pieces that people would play with, it gives us a good idea of how you could relate a mother to a child. They look sort of similar to each other, just like we were looking at in our Is Your Mama a Llama book. Now the last piece we're going to be looking at is called Earth Mother. Now this piece is done by Edward Burns Jones, and this was done in 1882, and is actually a piece that is done in encaustic. Now what that means is that the artist used colored waxes to apply in many, many layers to create this image. Here we have an earth mother, so not only a mother of the child in the painting, but a mother of the whole earth. So somebody that takes care of humans, like the baby that's shown here, and animals like the wolf, but also all the plants in the background. What we're going to do today for our project is make our own mother and child, or father and child, um, or grown up and child drawings or puppets. So let's break away to my hands and I'll walk you through the process. We'll even include a bit of a template in this PDF lesson. So if you wanted to, you could cut those out to make your paper puppets. All right, see you in a bit. This project is Family Finger Puppets. We have provided a template for this. Well, now all you have to do is then draw your individual family members color them in, and then you cut them out. Once all of your puppets are cut out, you can use a piece of tape or glue to make a loop at the bottom, and then you can use them as finger puppets. So, our second project is a family tree. What you'll be able to do in this is essentially create your own family. It can be your own real family, an imaginary family of people, or you can make an animal family like I did in my example. You're going to draw out the different shapes that the family members will be in, in pencil. Draw the members in pencil, and then you get to color it in. I used colored pencils, but you could use crayons, markers, paint, or whatever you choose. Thank you for joining me for this lesson. I hope that you have fun 
making your own parent-child puppets. You could do human puppets, which is what I've created the templates on the PDF for, or you could use your imagination and do any type of animal parent-child puppets that you want. So have fun. I hope you enjoyed the book that we read together today, the artwork that we looked at from the Worcester Art Museum collection, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.